What's happening YouTube? Thanks for stopping back by the channel today right here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So a couple of videos ago, at least five or ten or so ago, I did a custom turbo, at least unboxing install for the new turbo that I got from Ryan's diesel service. So today we are right here with Ryan and we are having the live capability to see him take apart one of these turbochargers. So we're going to go through a uh, VGT turbo, which would normally go into like an LBZ truck, just like mine. We're going to have him tear it down today, show you guys what the internals are and what actually goes into making this turbo a 68 millimeter badass that you guys can put in your LBZ truck. brand new unit. Um, this unit here we're going to go ahead and get apart. Um, we're going to actually go do a couple different changes. Uh, on this unit we're actually going to do a polished compressor cover on it. Um, but first we've got to go get it apart and do some machining and everything like that to it. So we'll go ahead and start. These compressor covers normally we'd machine out. Um, in this case on this order what we're going to do um, is it's actually going to get like I say polished. So we'll set this one on the side for the time being. Um, but like I say normally this compressor cover uh, we'd actually machine this out so that it looks 100% stock. These bearings here, you can see, they're smooth, where our HD bearings actually have a groove that's cut in here and there's more material uh, that ride on here. Uh, everything else is the same for the most part uh, in this kit, but like I say, this is a big uh, big thing that we do, um, like I say, with updated bearings. Uh, like I say, we'll literally take these bearings and throw them straight in the garbage. And at that point, uh, the center section We'll be ready to go in for machining. Um, a couple different areas that we do some machine work on and that sort of thing um, to go and allow the rotating assembly that we run. At that point, that side guy on the side that'll go over to machine. And here on the back side, this is actually where your veins are. Uh, this is where a lot of guys will say that you know I'm having you know maybe a P003A code um, or a P2563. Uh, a lot of guys will say either my veins are sticking, which could be a possibility. Um, it's generally either the veins or your actual unison ring here will actually cease to the center section. Um, in some cases, like on a remands, usually uh, when we get them back, it's usually the unison ring. Uh, we'll see it'll be actually stuck here, uh, rides right here. And usually we'll see it, it'll be stuck on here. Um, in some cases, uh, we'll actually have where the unison ring will actually break um, here because this actuator is trying to force past it. So at which point in time, then we'll go ahead and uh, replace it, make sure everything looks good. Uh, um, this is rod good and everything like that. Go ahead and pull our veins out. At this point, this exhaust house is ready to go to machining. One thing that is nice that Garrett actually did is they actually go and have this opening bigger from the factory. So if you're buying a brand new OE unit, you can look on Josh's old unit here and see uh, there's a lot more material that's left on there. Where on here, they actually already have this opened up. So when we come in to make our pass and actually go and machine out, um, there's not a whole lot of material we have to take out, being that it's already hogged out. So that is one sweet thing that they do. So we'll get both these pieces over to the machining center and uh, start working on it. By the way, we do. By the way, we do have the Rust Belt mechanic. He is documenting this as well. So make sure you guys check out his YouTube channel, as well as Truck Master also coming in for the assist and doing some video photography as well. So we're going to get the turbo into the machining center, get everything set up ready to, to machine. We're going to take some material out of this for a bigger turbine. Alright, so we got our part indicated in there. We're going to start to cut. We're going to take out the board first and a couple passes. And being that when you're dealing with the remands, the first pass is a ghost pass that's just barely going to touch off on the sides. You get some of the remands are really crusty on the inside. You don't want to just dive into some of that. Just 
coming so, up. So, so, uh, I hate to jump in here. So I know you explained the process. So what exactly is this actually doing with the, so that's coolant right there? Is that, that's what's shooting right there? Yep, we got coolant which is coming on our end mill just to keep the, the tool and the chip spool coming off of there. Prolongs life of tool and gets a better finish on your cut. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Right. You'll see it as you start cutting all, it's gonna wash all the chips away so they're not all piled up. So right now you're essentially just cleaning up the, the housing and the, the internals and... Yep. We're gonna, when we're done with this, it's gonna be able to take a bigger turbine. Okay, so you're, you're, you're opening in the hole up to put a bigger wheel. So now we're actually taking a decent cut out of it. So essentially you're just boring the hole out to put a bigger turbine wheel. Correct. Now this specific one, what size turbine are we going to be putting into this one today? This will receive a 66 when it's all done. Everything's looking good, so now we're going to let it do its final cut on the board. Now, final final cut on the board, so you're basically just just making sure it's all smooth. In. Yeah, it's just, this is going to take out just a little bit more material for a finished cut that's going to turn out real nice and smooth and round. So our board just finished machining. We're all opened up to size now. What we're gonna do now is put the new radius on here to match the turbine. This is gonna be for the exhaust side, correct? Correct, this so, is the exhaust side. So at this point, you're gonna be flipping the turbo over, is that correct? No, no, it's gonna be- Oh, it's gonna go deep into so it, okay. You can, you can kind of see what's left of our factory radius on there before we opened up the board. So now all we need to do is open that to the same amount we opened up the board. We got the exhaust housing all done for machining. Um, we'll blow it off a little bit more before final assembly and do a wash on it. But basically, um, Eric went, he opened up this diameter here to accept the larger turbine. Um, as you can see, this turbine is significantly larger than what would have came out of this. Um, this turbine here is going to be a 10 blade. This is a 13 blade. Um, so this wheel here is going to flow more. Um, like I say, this wheel will go, drop, sit right down in there and everything like that. Um, like you say, on a, once we're done here, we'll go, we'll put this uh, exhaust housing in the wash tank, get it all cleaned up, get it looking good. Um, we'll go ahead and start final assembly, start putting our veins back in. On this specific order, the customer didn't request high flow veins. He doesn't really need them, doesn't have the need. It's a 64 millimeter unit. So we'll just go ahead and put the stock veins back in, uh, put the unison ring back in, and uh, like I say, get this one going, ready to go back together. So the one big question we always get asked is differences, LOI customers especially. Um, you know, they say I already have a 63 and a half millimeter turbo. Um, why should I go to a 64 mil? Here's the big thing that I normally tell guys is this. Yes, you do. Uh, factory, you could definitely go and take that compressor cover off. It would go fit right over this compressor wheel the whole nine yards. Um, the one thing that I tell guys is this. Big things. Now granted, this isn't an LOI rotating assembly. We'll use this for an example though. Um, things that I tell guys, obviously, is going to be that your turbine is a prime example of having a 13 blade versus a 10 blade. Our aftermarket is a 10 blade. The other big difference that you can see is the compressor wheel size. This is a six blade wheel versus this is a 10 blade. The other thing is this is a cast wheel versus a bill of aluminum. Um, one thing I tell guys, you know, I've had some guys, you know, well, you're trying to scam people and why are you doing this? It's real simple. If that's the case, you know, these turbos, the 64s are rated out at 650 horse, uh, you know, rear wheel horsepower. Um, I tell guys, I'll tell you right now, you're not going to make that with your factory cast rotating assembly. Um, so it's one big thing that, you know, yes, I get it. You do have a 63 and a half, but there's definitely differences in the unit that way. Um, that's going to get you that 650 horsepower.
So basically, um, like we were saying when we took these units apart, um, these are kind of the differences. This is actually an OE Garrett bearing, uh, where this is actually the HD bearing that we put in there. Um, we like to put this in there. Um, it's a heavier duty bearing. Uh, you can see the oiling groove down in the center and everything like that. Like I say, even though this is a brand new bearing out of that stock unit that we just took out of the box, literally take this, throw it in the garbage, and uh, we'll go ahead and put our upgraded bearing in there. So on our turbos too, then we assemble them, all new bearings, thrusts, um, the spacers, all new bolts, gaskets, um, everything is going to be replaced on these units. Nothing O-ring wise has ever ran over on any of our units. Um, start to finish, we'll literally go strip everything out, throw it all in the garbage. Like I say, even on our brand new units um, that are coming in, these are literally from Garrett, we'll still take everything out, throw it all in the garbage, and like I say, put all new stuff in there. Just got done with the dyno and that was a killer run. I was super happy with those numbers once they finally got the dyno all figured out and everything. So I ended up with 632 horse. Uh, Rory ended up with 630 but monstered over with like 1200 and some foot pounds of torque. So that thing was really cool. I'm happy with the numbers I've got. I know I need a little bit of tuning help with it. So we're gonna work on getting a little bit more air to it. I think we're over fueling, uh, over timing, and we're just gonna need to add a little bit more air into the mix. We'll see what we can do with that one. But all in all, this has been a really fun truck show. I am actually gonna cut out and go enjoy myself and just check out some more of the trucks. So I'll roll some clips of the trucks from the meet. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning into the channel today. If you guys haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notification for when I come out with sweet new content just like this one. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. And as always, you guys stay awesome.